I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wrenches in my top drawer. So what's up, guys? This is MJ100K. I got my friend Angry McNerdy Face on the live stream. So we got some questions for him because he is a computer engineer. And we wanted to talk about this situation where this do- guy with the Dodge Challenger, his warranty was denied because Dodge figured out that his PCM had been reflashed. So here, let me bring that up on the screen. And it was a Hellcat, right? Yeah, I think it was a Hellcat. So here we go. After Challenger warranty denial, Dodge confirms PCM reflash leaves permanent mark even if you reverse the mods. So Angry McNerdy Face, as a computer engineer, can you confirm that this is absolutely true? Can they tell if you've written to the PCM? Yes. Oh, most definitely. If If you're writing against the signed calibration, I mean, we saw this during our time at Cummins. I worked with the electronic service group there and they can tell every change you're making to that thing and and you can claim none the wiser but they're going to be able to tell yeah i i can i could confirm as a as a ex-engineer that there are there's software that you can hook up to the vehicle that is more powerful than the dealership scan tool you know and it's stuff that you know even the technicians there aren't going to be familiar with but there's going to be no way to hide if you have updated the calibration or, and even if you've put an old one back on, like it, they're going to know. Yeah. yeah. And for, frankly, why should they cover a warranty if you're tampering with stuff? The, the warranty is there to cover you against normal wear and tear against a, a baseline delivered vehicle. If you're tampering with it, you're, you're exceeding the specifications of the vehicle. It's pretty easy to do that, especially if you're messing with, you know, ignition timing or, or you know, the fuel injectors or, or what have you. The, the things that these, you know, tuners want to do to, to get as much power out of, out of, the, out of that thing as it can, um, you know, emissions be damned. <laughs> yeah, that's... So, yeah, it's going to blow the engine. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's not going to, most definitely going to, but you, you run the risk. And... The fact that this dude brought it into the, the dealership, man, I can replace you. You did. It's your fault, man. He tried. He tried scamble. I mean, you never blown a motor before. Come on, man, man up. Replace it yourself. I'm trying to scam him out of warranty. Jeez. Well, <laughs> what my what I think happens is when they're doing these updates or these recalibrations, all they're doing is advancing the timing past uh what they did at the oem they're probably turning off the egr and they're just they're going too far advanced see people they think that you know that all they're all they're losing is that you know they're going to lose some miles per gallon and they're going to have higher emissions and those are going to be the only trade-offs but there's also a safety factor that they put in for the physical mechanism of the engine. Like they know, uh, you know, the tolerances of how high you could rev it and, and how far advanced you could push it. All they're doing is just pushing the envelope further to destruction. Yeah. You know, I just, do we have any details on what specifically this guy did? I mean, because advancing timing is one, you know, you're, you would expect a knock sensor to, you know, to, to retard timing if you're trying to advance it too much. But if even that was defeated somehow. Um, it doesn't say exactly what was done in the update. It's just saying, uh, the, I think the guy was trying to say that all he did was change his muffler <laughs> at first, like to get everybody on his side and then. Dodge came out and said, uh, no, it was way more than that. So it says, data was checked and confirmed by Stellantis Powertrain Engineering to be non-factory software. Claim was rejected for PCM and emissions tampering. Yeah. I wonder if he just put a straight pipe in or something and, and tried to bypass the O2 sensors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even... Put a blown motor, though. That. I mean... 
you're not blowing a motor by just doing that. I mean, it, 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 he had to be yeah. with <laughs> yeah. you know, performance characteristics and yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think I think another thing that people don't realize is that um, number one, these guys who are updating the calibrations, they're not. What's it say? I don't think that they're doing anything special other than pushing the envelope further to destruction. And another thing that people don't realize is that um, when you put the fuel in the vehicle, the octane may not always be exactly what's listed on the gas pump. So sometimes you get different blends and sometimes maybe the octane may be a little lower than it's supposed to be. So, you know, or it could be contaminated with something. So, you know, when you're, I think that's part of the X factor to where when people blow these engines is the quality of the gasoline that they're putting in them. And if you have the factory cowl in there, it's got the safety factor. It's probably not going to blow the engine. Yeah, it's a buffer zone. Yeah, it, it, like it, if it calls for 93 octane, you're putting in 91 octane. There's enough buffer in, in the stock tune that you're going to be okay. It's just going to pull timing a little bit. You might get a you might get a little knock at high boost, but it's going to pull timing and it's going to keep the engine safe. You know, you might lose some horsepower, but if you're tampering with that with that routine, um, all, all bets are off, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's how you blow up your engine. Um, yeah. And I think the real test would be if these guys who are making these these calibrations, you know, the freaking uh, stage one, stage two, all that, and they sell you the parts with the calibration. If they're so confident in your calibration, then why don't they warranty your engine if they're yeah. so good? Some of them do. So the more reputable shops will. Um, I can't name any off the top of my head. Really? But um, they'll warranty your if engine. You, if you look at um, um, some aftermarket parts suppliers, uh, maybe not like the they won't warranty the whole system, but they will warranty their part even in racing conditions. Um, now, as far as warranting like the, the vehicle and whole, you know, like like a drivetrain warranty, um, you're probably stuck with OEM kits like, you know, Mopar makes kits. Uh, you know, I had that, uh, I still have my, my 05 SRT4 and, you know, Mopar made the stage kits. And as far as I'm aware, I, I if I recall correctly, you got a warranty with those still. Well, yeah, I mean, if it's a war, if it's something that you get from the OEM, then yeah, you'll probably get a warranty with that. But I'm talking about like these guys who are selling That's these market stuff. updated cows. Yeah. You know, like just selling an intake or exhaust, you know, they could warranty the part. Yeah. But when you're, you, you know, that up real fast, man, like Diablo Sport, if you go to their site, I guarantee you they didn't have a warranty in there. Yeah, they're gonna have that can disclaimer. Oh, you know, this is off road only, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you're really driving a challenger off road. <laughs> yeah, well, it'd be a, off road, but just off public roads. It could be a private road, it could be a drag strip, <laughs> you know, yeah. vertical track, whatever. Oh man, that's crazy, but yeah, that's man. I'm unless you got a whole bunch of money, you do not want to be changing it because, you know. The dealerships don't want to cover anything under warranty in general unless they have to. Because warranty is not paying them as much as a customer pay job anyway. Yeah, and again, it's, it's, it's for a, a baseline vehicle rolling off the factory floor built to specification. It's built to their specifications. And as soon as you manipulate that, you're exceeding those specifications. So yeah. why should they cover that? You know, it, it'd be no different than if I took my cell phone and popped it open and put a, you know, a, I don't know, a nicer camera in it or something. And then, <laughs> oh, it broke. I go back to Samsung. Hey, guys. Look what you what, sold. Why did my camera break? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you yeah. You remember, uh, the, what was that guy on MTV, the Tom Joyner show or the Tom Green show? <laughs> you remember that when he bought yeah. a... Uh, he was doing a prank on somebody, a hidden hidden camera prank, and he bought a calculator. And then he brought this yeah. giant mallet out, and then he smashed yeah. the calculator. And he's like, you got to give me my money back. It's on the warranty. 
Oh, dude. While he's on the telephone, I'm going to check out what the guarantee is on this calculator. Oh, this has a one-year guarantee on it. So, I'm probably going to buy this one. I just want to make sure that... I just want to make sure. I just can't move oh, But I just opened the package a minute ago, so and it was working. I just okay. opened the package a minute ago. I didn't open the package a year ago. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> That's pretty much what you're doing, man. Tom Green, dude. Tom Green was Tom Green was YouTube before there was YouTube. Like that. Oh, was, those are some classic episodes, man. But so to put this in perspective a little bit for me, so. Um, I bought a, I got, I bought a 2005 SRT4 back in 2000. I, I flew up to Philly and drove it home. I drove it 800 miles home. It's the only one I could find. It was still for sale. It was brand new and the, like that that, it was, that I wanted. It was an orange one. It's beautiful. And uh, I love that car, man. I did everything to that car. And I bought that and I modded it with the understanding that my warranty's gone. So if I needed anything, I drove it for a while, you know, just to make sure it was okay, everything was fine. And I took it into the dealer just to, before I tampered with it at all. I took it into the dealer. He had a few things fixed. Like I had like the fuel fuel rail cover replaced because the paint was peeling off of it already. And um, I think I had um, maybe, a, um, I think I had like a, a bad bushing or something in one of my... Uh, control arms and you know right. just stupid little stuff i got that stuff taken care of but i started modding that thing and i'm like i'm not going back to do that again <laughs> like this is it <laughs> like there's no warranty anymore <laughs> it's over. but at the same time i did my research and understood what i was doing yeah you know i'm, I'm not going to go slap on a, a gt 40r turbo on a stock motor and and boost it to the moon through the stock intercooler pipes the stock intake stock intercooler you know, stock engine, stock injectors. Like, I'm gonna blow this motor in a heartbeat if I do that. You know, you, you can't do that. You gotta build it up. You gotta apply the supporting mods. You know, like before, I'm not just gonna like crank out 400, four or 500 horsepower just just with like one mod. You know, that. So did you, you did you, ever, did you, you put that on the? Car. Did you put that on a dyno? Yeah, I had a dyno tune several times. That's All right. there's, there's you know, I. I I street tuned it a lot, but that only gets you so far. You know, street tuning is good kind of like for like gross tuning, you know, making sure you're not over boosting or, or making sure you're not, uh, you know, knocking too much or anything like that. Um, but there's no taking the place of dyno tuning. You know, you got to get yeah. that on a, on a dyno. You got to instrument it. You got to see what your O2 is doing. You know, um, it, it, a load based dyno is best. Um, because you can you can simulate different driving conditions on on the dyno, and that's where these manufacturers spend their money. Yeah, you know, is, is in the in in that load cell, in, in those those system test environments where they're testing the whole vehicle. That's that's how they develop these tunes, and these Hellcats, man. Um, you're not going to get much better than that. You're probably not. I mean. <laughs> There, there's parts of the engine certainly that that are just you gotta you just find I don't know what the weakest link is on a Hellcat. I, I, I'm not even going to venture to guess, but I know for my SRT4, um, one of the first things to go is uh, um, beyond the stock turbo. You're not getting more than maybe 270 horsepower out of stock turbo. Mm -hmm. um, fuel injectors, um, those are usually capped pretty low. Uh, you're going to get heat soak in your in your intercooler, um, just the piping, the air intake, um, and then you got to get into the engine. You know. So did you did you upgrade anything in the engine in that? Oh, it's yeah, absolutely. It's got a, a fully built motor, uh, bottom and top end. Um, you know, there, there's no escaping. Um, building the motor, you know, it, I, I I didn't go beyond 300 horsepower with that car until I had a built motor. You know, Sweet. Uh, now the uh, the stage three kits, I think um, they have a methanol in injection system, um, and I, I think they kind of push the envelope at about 350 horsepower. But that's you know that's turbo fuel injectors, um, I think even a fuel pump, and uh -huh. obviously completely overhauled tune. 
Yeah, I mean, by Mopar. Yeah, you you start playing around with stuff like that, like it's your car now. It's not yeah. you and Dodge's car anymore. It's yeah. all yours. And there's other stuff you got to consider. Like, I had to build my transmission. I had to I had to put a, a you know a forged input shaft in it. You know, a, a billet input shaft, new gears. Uh, you know. Yeah, you got to do everything. I mean, the, the clutch <laughs> is gonna just crap out. Like as soon as you put more than two hundred fifty horsepower, on it, the the clutch is it's toast. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. The challengers are all um, uh, the Hellcats. Uh, the, I think they had a pretty low take rate on manuals, but uh, for the most part, they're automatics. All right. Did you upgrade the brakes on that? The brakes? Um, I actually didn't touch the brakes on my SRT4. They what? Those, those are great brakes. Uh, out of the factory, man, they're great. Um, the brakes just slow you down, right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the SRT brakes were solid. Um, no and, art. You know, I, I wasn't doing any kind of like uh, road racing, you know, or, or like track. It, I, I took it to the drag strip a few times, but it was mostly a street car. You know, it was. Uh, it, I think the term race car is a little loosely used. Uh-huh. <laughs> if I wanted to um, race, um, yeah, I certainly would have needed to upgrade the brakes in that thing, but. Um, tires are more important, honestly. And it was just, I put Michelin Pilot 4S's on that thing, and that God, those things are sticky. So, James, since you know all about Dodge, do you really think they're going to stop making the Hemi V8? Like, are they going to come back in two, three years from now, or is it really over? Honestly, and this is probably not a popular opinion amongst the V8 purists, but that hurricane in line six, I think you'll forget about that Hemi V8 real fast. Really? Oh yeah. Is that Using good? A high output hurricane I6. Oh man. It's more efficient. It's more powerful. <clears throat> it's, it's a tighter package. You're not dealing with that V engine crap. It's one head. It's one exhaust manifold. Give me that. I'll forget about the Hemi real fast when I'm driving, uh, driving around a hurricane. <laughs> so they only got the hurricane in one vehicle now. Was the. I think it's just in the Grand Wagoneer Jeep, right now. The drag um, Grand Wagoneer? I don't even know that those are out in the wild yet. It's August 11th, 2023. I, I don't know that those are out there in the world right now. Maybe they are. Yeah, I, I think that paper, I'll take it. I think a lot of some OEMs are trying to give the perception like they're switching over to all EV when they really have some cards in their back pocket. Like, you know, GM, I heard they were doing research into a new V8. They're putting aside $500 million to design a new V8. And Ford, they're still making the Mustang. Interesting. So... I think Dodge is going to come back in two, three years, maybe with that straight six you're talking about, that hurricane. Yeah. Turbocharged straight six. And I think uh, people are going to be happy with that. You know, and that brings up a, a, a just total sidebar, but, you know, it doesn't have to be full EV. You know, it they could end up doing something with hydrogen fuel cells, you never know. I mean, you could still leverage an internal combustion engine with alternative fuels. You know, it doesn't have to be gasoline and diesel and, and ethanol, which I think ethanol is ridiculous. But um, <laughs> Hydra- Hydrogen? You like hydrogen? I don't like it, but it's, it's an option. Oh, man. I always, I always think hydrogen is kind of a pipe dream is never going to happen because it's not like the oem just creates a hydrogen vehicle it's the government that has to put in the infrastructure and i don't see a big push for the millions of millions of dollars it's going to take to put in a working hydrogen infrastructure well at the same time the government didn't build tesla's recharging stations did they no, but I mean, you so think Toyota it, is going to start building hydrogen stations all over the country? <laughs> no, and yeah, really, that is the challenge. Anytime you're you're changing uh, 
you know, at, at a large scale, you're changing um, your energy en effects. We're talking about the energy industry. <laughs> and we're steering a battleship, you know? Yeah. So it's going to take small moves. And, uh, but yeah, I'm glad to hear that, you know, the OEMs aren't just completely abandoning ice, you know, ice engines. So, I mean, yeah, it's Stellantis just released the Hurricane I-6. They pumped a ton of money into it. Yeah. I, I had no idea that GM was pursuing a, a, a new uh, V8. Oh, yeah. I saw an article on that a couple months ago. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they, they kind of keep it quiet, I think, you know. Yeah. I don't think they like to talk about it a lot. Yeah. I just, I, I think, so I'm, I, I got a, a 2020 Ram now with, you know, it's a Hemi, you know, 5.7. Um, <clears throat> the non e torque variant, because I don't like the idea of having a large lithium ion battery sitting right behind where my baby seat is. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, I, I think my next truck will be a Ram with that hurricane in it. Preferably yeah. a high output. You That'd know, be nice, maybe, a, maybe a three quarter ton. Uh, you know, I, I might need a, a, you know, I might be towing a gooseneck camper by then. <laughs> Who knows? Nice. But I'm expecting those to hit the market. <clears throat> um, I think 2025 model year was was uh, the last last time I last time I checked on that. So, yo, do you agree with me that uh, with all these electric cars? with them being so big and heavy that the time for small cars is over. Like the really small cars, like the freaking uh, Oh, turn it into tin cans. Yeah, yeah. Those little tiny um, Mitsubishi Mirage and Ford Fiesta and uh, smart cars, smart cars, death traps. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They're so tiny. Yeah, man. The physics is not working in their favor. <laughs> it's, oh my you gosh! Can't, you can't break the laws of physics. I mean, it's like a crumple zone can only be so big. <laughs> Those little cars, there's, cars, there, there's <laughs> no crumple zone. Like yeah. you are at the crumple zone, unless they're using some exotic like safety mechanism. Like I know they're talking about like foam and bubbles and all this crap. <laughs> 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 they're gonna put you in foam. Yeah, they're just gonna like it just. It'd be like just gonna drown in the foam. Oh, what was that? There was one of those like weird dystopian futuristic movies. It, it may have been Demolition Man. Oh gosh. He gets in like a car accident. The whole car just like fills up with like foam or something. Jens Spartan. you in now? Jens Spartan. What are you thinking, of, Hot plate? Yeah, those are the worst cars. It's it's ironic that they call those smart cars when that's actually the dumbest car you could possibly drive. Oh, the people that drive them, though. No, MJ, they're the smartest people on the planet. What are you talking about? <laughs> the people that drive smart cars, they are just, we should all be emulating them. They're, they're just oh, the best people among us. That's the worst. <laughs> oh, man. All right, man. Well, uh, I ain't going to hold you here all night. But thanks for coming to the first podcast. It's been real, MJ. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is fun. Yeah, we'll do it again. That's what's up, man. Thanks for coming by. And everybody, thanks for tuning in to MJ's podcast. We talk about cars and random car subjects. <laughs> and we make fun of people who drive smart cars. Every time. Every time. <laughs> All right, Shoot. man. Well, thanks for... Thanks for tuning in and have a good one.